there is a huge new update to the Bing search engine. It's now powered by AI. Microsoft have implemented their successor to ChatGPT, which is meant to be faster, better, and smarter. What makes it unique is that this AI is one of the first to properly access and browse the web. And unlike ChatGPT, which is meant to be a helpful chatbot, Sydney's goal is to be a personal assistant for browsing the web. This means it can search and summarize news articles, find and provide cooking advice, and even provide new and interactive ways to search the web like never before. I got access to the early beta, so I'm going to showcase exactly how it works, test its limits, and see how it compares to its competition. I asked Google, Siri, and Bing to help me write a holiday plan. Here's what I got from Siri. Here's Google. And finally, here's Bing. Bing gave me a whole lot of suggestions. It helped me narrow down my options, such as places to visit and stay, and even the prices for tickets from websites, all without leaving a single tab. I also asked it to help me write an email draft, and here's how that went. And voila, I have an email written for me. Pretty useful stuff, especially for me who shifts through hundreds of emails every day. Bing's AI can answer questions, summarize websites and articles, and even write whatever you want. It's essentially an improved version of ChatGPT, newer, faster, and more accurate. It holds better conversations. According to what you've written, it adjusts your preferences. It's always up to date too. It uses Microsoft's Prometheus model, which constantly feeds it new AI data from search indexes and articles. It also runs on GPT 3.5, a new iteration of ChatGPT's framework. Anyone can use it too. If you're a student, you can summarize academic articles or create references. If you're using it for work, you can ask it to reply to business emails, draft up data, create tables, or even write business proposals. And if you're using it just for search, like say finding music artists in my area, Bing can provide a broad list of artists and it can find out exactly what genre of music I'm looking for and generate an entire new list based on those suggestions. Anything you ask it, it'll give you a straightforward and detailed answer, which is something that just hasn't been possible with other assistants to this date. To access Bing AI, I did something unheard of. I used Google to download the Microsoft Edge browser. This is recommended by Microsoft as the best browser right now to access the new Bing search. And with this, I'll just select to try Edge and download and install it. Now I've already done this, so I'm just gonna open it up here in the background. If this is the first time that you're accessing Bing, you can head over to Google and search up Bing. But the address is quite simple. It's just bing.com or bing.com. The search engine works just like any other. You can ask it anything such as, for example, helping me write a new sponsor email for a video. And the first thing you'll notice is on the right hand side, this a new Bing logo, and it's actually accessing the newest version of what is normally ChatGPT, but also searching up all the results here on the page and pulling that all together to write this email for me. Now, on top of that, it also does links, backlinks to all the sources it's currently using to reference this information. And that's really cool. Here you can see how it's referencing Podia as well as doc formats and blog.shellify.com. But I'm only getting started here with Bing AI. The next thing I can do is ask, what is the weather like tomorrow? There's a new chat tab here at the very top. And this expands immediately into the Bing AI chat system. And this is the one that's probably the most powerful right now on the web, allowing you to search up questions and even pull in answers based on search results and their content. There are different conversation styles as creative, informal or formal, depending on what you're looking for. Here, when I do a what's the weather like tomorrow, not only do I get a location lookup via my geolocation, it finds the weather for me. It also then gives me a small explanation, such as the fact that I'm here in Australia, and it even gives me a widget with all the weather forecasts. I think the combination of all of this is pretty damn awesome. I can narrow it or change it by selecting a different location. It'll do another search for me, and then it'll pop up a new answer as well as the widget with those weather forecasts. Going back to the Microsoft Bing homepage. Wow, that's hard to say. Uh, we actually have lots of different examples to showcase how you can start using Bing's AI to perform any type of search, traditional ones, as well as new ones that would have never been possible before. Next, I want to learn how to cook a Caesar salad. And immediately you should be able to tell that I have no idea what I'm doing because you don't normally cook a Caesar salad. But I'm gonna see if Bing can help me figure out how to do this. There are general results if you just use Bing, 
but if you head over to the chat, it's gonna work a little bit different. Bing's AI will use this question or this search prompt and do its own search. The results will then be summarized and it's going to give me an outline of exactly what I need. In this case, it's starting off with the ingredients, saying exactly what ingredients I actually want and even prompting me for my preferences so that I can take it from there. The AI asks whether I want the chicken and egg version or just the clashy version or even just asking how to make the dressing. Here, I'm gonna say, no, I just want the classic version. What ends up happening is that I'm engaging with search now as a chat. And this is what makes the Bing AI so unique in comparison to traditional searching. Now that I've given this information, it starts to prepare a recipe for me with a reference to recipesandeats.com. And here it's telling me what I need to do in order to get it all ready. On top of that, I can add additional questions to this, such as what are some good juices or drinks that would go with a Caesar salad? This isn't really something I could have done before. I would have had to do some manual searching and hopefully Bing can just continue on this conversation with the context of the Caesar salad to give me some answers as to what would work as drinks for a Caesar salad. And this is where I think it'll take a little bit of time before people realize that they can start performing searches in very different ways as to what they used to in the past. Here, I've got quite a lot of different wines that people have recommended that go with this meal, but it wasn't really what I was searching for. I was actually more after a fruit juice. So here is where I can adjust my question once more to be more specific, to essentially ask for what kind of a fruit juice pairing would work with a Caesar salad. Here, I get some great recommendations, such as the citrus juice with orange grapefruit and lemon. And it also tells me why each one of these work. There is also references to the original websites. So if I wanted to view those to exactly understand why ChatGPT or Bing AI has recommended these, I can check those links out. I did decide to do this and it took me to this, the best Caesar salad recipe. It's not very specific for drinks. So I checked the second one, which was pairing up drinks to accompany a Caesar salad. So obviously the Bing AI is doing a good job to both search the web as well as summarize these results for me. Another thing I wanted to do is figure out some places to go and watch some music. So I asked it to show me music events happening in my area. It could use geolocation as well as have a look at the search results to give me the most up-to-date information about different types of music in my area. Bing's AI basically told me exactly what dates they were playing at, as well as which artists and even the locations, such as the Optus Stadium. And this was really cool. But it also asked me if I liked a different type of music. So I put in that I'm in search of maybe rock music. So it actually provided me some examples of rock music that are coming up as well. I wanted to test the limits of the new Bing AI Copilot. So what I decided to do here is ask it to help me find good pictures of cats that I can use as part of my next email. Since OpenAI, ChatGPT and Bing AI are mostly text models, they can't specifically always identify very much in terms of images. But what it can do is use alt tags and meta tags to pull in a widget of different types of cats. I wanted something more specific though. I wanted a cat that was reading. So here I put in an updated thing that I want a cat reading a book. Hopefully it will do a better job at finding these results. But what I think really is happening in the background is for it to just be using the traditional search to perform that same type of a query and then just give me back the results. I think what would be really cool if they connected this AI to something like Midjourney or DALI 2 to then create these types of images, because I think that would take it one step further. I'd finally be able to find a cat reading a book by a fireplace. Bing's AI isn't perfect though such as a simple query, like common things people search for. I think the very first answer to this question is the reason why Bing and its AI simply won't show it. In a way, this is quite friendly, especially in terms of having a safety net against anyone who might be searching the web and might not be ready to view some of these items. Generally speaking, the content filter for the AI won't show anything malicious, nor anything that is subject to be against a age limit. And I don't mind this because it means that I can put my son on this AI chat without having to worry that he'll see something obscene. And if you ask the same question twice, you might get a different answer each time, such as again, searching for common things people search for. This time I got common movies as well as common things like weather as well as social posts. So you never really might know what the answer to a question is because each time it might be a little bit different.
As someone who's also a programmer, I'm quite excited to see how the Bing AI will help me solve programming problems. In the past, this was one of the most difficult things to figure out. But these days, Bing not only finds the answer from common sources, but it also explains the answer to me. While ChatGPT was quite useful at this, it never was able to access the internet to be able to give me these answers. Whereas I think the extra benefit of the Bing AI is that it can find answers for you from the internet and therefore they can be more accurate as well. Quick pause, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And on top of that, that's the end. If you guys want more on ChatGPT or OpenAI or even Bing AI, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.